I think it could have a tremendous impact simply because AI will most likely have a tremendous impact. The problem is, of course, making guidelines that actually guide the development of AI effectively without hindering development, but also without uh, making it too easy to get into bad traps. So when we start thinking about guidelines, uh, especially when hanging around the United Nations, people immediately think of regulation and banning things or uh, preventing things. And it's true, there are various things we want to avoid, but it's hard to avoid misuses of technology. It's more important to promote good uses. And that means stimulating development of technologies that make us safer, that make AI more useful to a large group of people. And some of these guidelines might be very general. Uh, sometimes uh, almost nauseatingly simple, like, yeah, teach engineers a little bit more about ethics and how the rest of the world works. Sometimes uh, the converse might be true. Teach uh, the politicians and policymakers a bit about technology, what it can and what it cannot do. And some of it might be more subtle, like figuring out how to set the incentives right in society or in research or in technology. So we develop the tools we actually need rather than the ones that seem to make a quick buck. So it seems like in the lab at least, and if you have enough data set and computing power, we have kind of solved the perception. That's not all of intelligence, but it's very, very useful. So I would expect that any system or any task that requires something to perceive something else, figure out what it is and where it is, is going to be possible to automate. It's going to have tremendous effects uh, on the translation, on uh, turning language into uh, voice or voice into language, which is going to have enormous effects, for example, on people who are illiterate. So I think we're going to see a, especially a revolution in identifiability and user interfaces for our technology. I also think that we should be really excited about AIs as tools for helping in the communication and collaboration. Getting systems that actually take social media to the next step to actually allow larger groups to function together and efficiently find each other and solve problems. The AI is not solving the problems, but it's helping other people to solve the problems together. So my organization is mostly thinking about how to improve safety of artificial intelligence. Can we construct uh, smart learning adaptive systems that actually behave themselves? So that's a more of a long range aim. But when we think about the sustainability goals, a lot of them involve constructing smart infrastructures, whether that is smart cities, smart energy grids, better ways of handling our local ecology, or just monitoring what's going on. All of these systems need to be reliable. And I think artificial intelligence can play a paradoxical role of both making things better or worse. It can become much worse if we don't know how to actually make this adaptive system stable. There could be new systemic risk emerging from it. But if we understand that problem and handle it, we can instead create sta stable systems that can be scaled up to enormous uh, sizes that actually help us achieve a lot of the infrastructure, probably much more cheaply, much more efficiently, much more sustainable uh, than uh, we have, would have in the past. So in the discussions about uh, technology, typically there is this assumption that technology is expensive. That's not really true. Uh, technology today, in terms of electronics, is fairly cheap. The smartphone is spreading across Africa. And the software, since you can copy it indefinitely, can also be very cheap. However, it's costly to develop it. In machine learning, you need enormous data centers uh, and, uh, to do the training, and you need enormous amount of data to do proper training. These ones are relatively uh, unequally distributed, and there is an interesting power issue. Also, developing countries might lack data. There is simply not enough data about what's going on there, so you can train useful systems that would benefit them. So we might see interesting new arguments about data inequality, and other inequalities about talent and access. Not so much based on the actual hardware and software, but the other factors going into making smart systems. I think this is going to be an interesting debate, and of course the United Nations is going to be at the focus point for that.